Hello there and welcome. My name is Martin Close and this is the Classical Art Academy Online Art School. Evening everybody and welcome to tonight's stream. Um, so what we're going to be doing this evening is to continue with this, focusing again on really developing these trees up and complicating them more. Bit of a slow week, I've not done much painting sadly, but what I have done is that I've given the sky area another uh, layer of paint. I've also done a few corrections in here which became very apparent. I just needed to tidy this area up so I've done that. And I've spent so far about an hour just mixing up some colours, which I'll show you on the palette now. So let's introduce these. We've got um, on the palette itself, we've got titanium white, cadmium yellow deep, uh, cadmium orange, cadmium red light, French ultramarine. We've got um, ivory, no we haven't, <laughs> olive green, <laughs> got olive green, burnt sienna and ivory black. Now from these I've I mixed up an orange which you can see here if I just put the palette out a little bit it's almost all gone. It's a it was kind of a you could call it an, an ambient colour and with this is quite a large pile and with this colour I mixed up these greens so I rather than adding white or light yellow to the green I added this colour, so they're all in one big sort of happy family, you could say. As I've got around here, we changed that to um, the uh, burnt sienna, which of course is a is a dark orange, dark reddy orange. So in here, we we're now making the darker green. So first off, I'm going to go from, and it's not always the case, but I'm going to go from light into dark. The sky area is actually a little bit wet, which is nice. And it'll help, it'll help us sort of work into it rather than have a hard edge on the horizon, which we really don't want. I think we're okay. I don't think we're getting any um, reflections or sheen. So and I think the sound and everything is working. So thumbs up, we'll, we'll carry on. So first off, we want to put in some of this. Now I'm using two fluids currently. Um, I've got bleach linseed oil, which I've used for the sky, which I've just dipped the brush into. But next door to it, I've got, um, this is Venetian turpentine. Just there, it's Venetian turpentine. It's, it's a tree sap based medium, effectively and it goes very sticky like honey after about 15 minutes and it's that which you'll be using to do the um, complications into the tree area. So let's see how we go. Very light at first, not too much paint on the brush. I kind of want to do is I just want to break into this area. We've got the um, rough outline as to where things are. But now I just want to break in a little bit. So we're moving around these shapes. Like I said, the sky is wet. It forms a bridge. I'm not using a small brush for this. And I don't want to blend it completely away. So I want to create... <coughs> Sorry, my throat's a bit rough today. I want to create a kind of 
intermediate between the sky and the trees. Could use a smaller brush, making smaller marks, but like a challenge. And I think this will, this will work quite well. Most important is to keep the brush marks um, random. Each one should be slightly different than the previous. I'll be making some sped up versions of these and putting them on as 10 minute videos on YouTube. If you'd like to ask any questions, please do. Um, questions are always welcome. The chat is on. Sticking to the lighter colour around this area. It's really just to break up the solid mass. Got a bit of the sky colour left so we can complicate that as well and push some of that colour in. I'll show you what I mean by that, do it now. So this is the sky colour. A little variable sky colour, it goes a bit more, it goes warmer down here. Just get the right colour. <laughs> so I like to use the word complicate because it's not detail, it's complicating a solid mass. And I think that's a better way of explaining what I'm, what I'm doing now. So I've got two brushes in my hand, it's also a bit of tissue, we lose the tissue. I'm not using the sticky medium yet because I'm still very near the, I'm pretty much in the sky. <coughs> and you never, never really want to use the sticky medium in the sky. Something that has texture to it, it's ideal. The sky doesn't have much texture, so it's not going to work very well. Just loading the brush up again. It's 
That's what we another way of explaining what we're doing is that these are the gaps within the trees. Too much paint, it's the other clue. Enough to cover, but pointless going too much. It's just going to get in the way. As we put more paint on, it's going to slosh around and the paint's not going to bite. So what I mean by that is that uh, the, as you apply paint onto paint, you want it to have a little bit of resistance, some kind of bite. Uh, so that it takes, and you can uh, control the paint shapes. You don't want it to just slosh around the place. Too much paint, not good. These trees are quite in distance, so there's not going to be a lot of detail, as they say. As I come to the edge, kind of mess it up. You can see that it begins to just complicate everything up a little bit. Bringing it down. You can see I'm not putting too much paint on, and this effectively is also the third layer. So it's really beginning to take well. First layer of paint, which kind of, I don't know, it doesn't paint in the same way as the second or third or even fourth or fifth layers of paint. almost as if it goes on easier or it goes over the surface easier I should say right moving just down into this area and then I'll start to curve it in gets nearer and I'll start very varying the values Now I really just want to get the bare shapes of these in and at a distance so that they're not too highly visible. If we make something too sharp at uh, this distance, it brings it really forward. So it has to um, almost disappear into the um, mists or the ambient colour of light which is the forest or this misty evening I think it's an evening it could be morning or evening it's lots of very simplistic sky I, I almost decided to complicate the sky a bit but I decided not to I'm going to just work this. This is probably going to be the um, finished level or layer. So I want this to be kind of right. Just looking at the computer screen because I can see the 
whole painting on there in one glance. Whereas it's about four foot wide there, so, so it's always good to um, step back. Very light touches with the brush. Mm -hmm. Like I said, no detail at this distance. It's just the detailing is going to be in, in amongst this lot. Bringing that around. Very, very gentle strokes. I'm hardly touching the paint with the brush. Just learning to move over the canvas and soften some of these colours into each other without losing the shape. Yeah, okay. Just check systems, make sure we're okay. I think everything's looking fine. Let's carry on. Really, this um, is almost the same colour, not quite. Certainly, it's very similar in value. Um, and the paint, which is already on there on the sky, because it got a bit darker as we went into this area. Like I said, I'm scrubbing that in because I don't, I don't want too much paint on them. As of yet, I've not used any of the um, Venetian Terps, which is that sticky medium. Very gentle. Yeah. That gives you, you can see the difference between this side and this side now. It, just pushes it further back. Let's just move across on this edge here. Don't really want anything too obvious coming out of that at this stage. It's almost um because this is the furthest away, um, there is the furthest away. So hardly any detail at all. That's probably as much as we really want. Let's move up here. If it hadn't had two previous layers of paint, I wouldn't be putting it on this thin. I'd be a bit more generous. But the canvas is well sealed now. Paint on top of paint. And um, I can afford to scrub it in a bit and not use so much. Still get the effect that I want. I think when you've put too much paint on a canvas and you've you realize your mistake very very quickly it's one of the first things which I think when you're a student you learn not to do twice yeah 
so we're just hinting at shapes of trees. Nothing else. So I think in this area, certainly, this 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 bank, this bank of trees here is much further further away than this load here. So they can afford to be a bit less defined. Probably a little bit mean, with a bit more um, paint on. Push this up. Doing both sides left and right of this because <clears throat> obviously the sky is wet and I can achieve um, the edges on both banks very quickly, very easily if it's, uh, if it's wet. Whereas if it's dry, I'm going to get a hard edge. To paint on to dry gives you a hard edge. I do not want a hard edge if I'm working in distance. Scrubbing the area in. So, working effectively now into more precise colour as well as we progress through the Okay, try to get too repetitive. Again, it's very easy to become the picket line fence along here. I'm going to join those up. There we are, we made one big tree. With the sky brush, again, just cut in. Very important to be careful how you do this as well because you don't want to, again, develop that twee picket line fence phenomenon. We have very tidy brains, so it's like cloud, cloud, cloud. Oh, there's another one, cloud. Um, just the worst thing. It's so easy to do, especially when you're painting, because your brain just switches off, which is one of the reasons why we paint, obviously. But when your brain switched off, <coughs> your subconscious is in control. Which is actually all good, so a really good thing. But it's all too easy to, then to just go into picket line fence mode and uh, it's repetitive shape. Right, let's get up here. Can I put a little bit of linseed oil and push. Letting the brush dance. 
see what the result is and then we can adjust if we need to pop it up here now these trees are getting nearer now so they'll be experiencing awful more detail and they'll be going darker but I'm just putting the edge in so I'm going to continue with this colour nothing else it'll act as a base for the darker colours to go on Tiny bit of linseed, although that might have been too much. Take a bit off and pop this in. Notice I'm also holding the brush at the end of the handle. Some people have these enormous handles and they hold the brush up by here. No, no. It's quite easier. Use the handle. These painting techniques we cover pretty much most videos through repetition that we learn and um, I'm very keen to demonstrate rather than just sit down and explain stuff to you. It's much easier for you to see it in action. Two things, if there is any particular something you're not too sure about, please leave a comment and, or email us, message us, and we'll see if we can put that into a video. Or at least address it in a stream. Right, so you can see I've got a very light amount of pigment coming in, paint and the words coming in. Now I'm going to switch back to this side. So we've got pigment down here. Yep. Let's get a bit more on that spot. Beauty of oil says that what I've just done can still work tomorrow. I'll be using oils. There's no panic, no pressure. You can sleep, get up the next morning, and carry on with your painting. <coughs> okay, so we've got the edge. And we've come in about probably three or four centimetres from the edge into the tree line. And we can now start to build this image out. Mm. Good. So we've got a good area now all the way around here. And um, it's not too wet. Gonna make that a bit wetter. But it's got something on it. And that something is going to give us what we are looking for as far as the easy soft edge. Right, let's start building. So that brush goes down. That's going to be our light brush. Um, do I need to cut in at all? Let's have a quick look. Load the brush up, have a little play. Okay. 
Always be mindful of repetitive shape. I think I'll, um, one of the things I'll like to do, I think, next week, or next week, maybe next week's stream, is I'd like to, because I mentioned it before, how we can keep the values true, but play with the colours a little. And, um, I think it's worth seeing. We can make a bright red forest or a purple forest or something. It really works. Sounds crazy. That looks a little bit strange, so not so happy with that. This is what I'm saying. When you, when you whatever you do, just don't blindly do it. Just check it out and don't agree with something. Don't change it. So let's just change that to a happier shape. It's going to be green again. And it's uh, not too terrible. It just needs a little bit of something to it. Make it more believable. What does it look like? Okay. This line, I think, let's uh, take that out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's the uh, overall what we're looking for. Good. Pop that in. Okay, let's move on. Yep, now, start with a different uh, clean brush, I should say. So now we want to go next colour down. Now there's a slight change to this. And the other change of not only just colour, is that we're now going to go and use the Venetian Turpentine. Only a small amount. Now I'm adding it to the colour which I'm using, not the main pile, because if I did that, the whole colour would go off and uh, very quickly, no matter how much we put in the fridge, it just wouldn't be good. Right. So let's have a quick think about this. Thinking of where darks are going to be. If you can only just see that, that's good news. Kind of thinning with all this light, the shadows are going to be away from the light, so going to be around here. How many shadow shapes we have. It's going to be in this area. Away from that initial light. And we'll start to see those two marks. I've already brought out like the beginnings of two trees there. Uh, which will become more apparent as we go into... Oh, whoops, wrong. Oh. Uh, shouldn't talk and paint at the same time. So the 
sticky medium, which is a Venetian turpentine. You can get that from Royal Tannins, uh, Rembrandt Oils. Another um, product which is equally as good is Mike Harding's PM5, I think. Have I got some? Uh, yes. Yeah, PM5. So here we go. I'll put that on screen for you. Oh, hang on. Won't be able to focus it. It's that Mike Harding's PM5. This is about phew, eight years, maybe, old. A little goes a long way. It's a little bit of an odour to it. Um, it does smell like tree sap, so make sure you're in good ventilation when you're using it. I've got the uh, window open here in the studio. So again, I'm just letting this brush dance over this area. And all I'm doing is just a little bit of shape, nothing else. So holding the brush so it sticks up. Um, being really mindful because this area is a long, long way off. And uh, we don't want to be putting in too much too soon. Okay. And back into that second green again. You can already feel the uh, medium beginning to work. About probably five, maybe 10, 15 minutes and it begins, begins, begins. <laughs> Speaking is difficult, isn't it? Um, to go sticky on you. <laughs> Joys of live broadcasting. And you've got your worlds confused. Right. Yep. Now, this is, I think I mentioned last week, going to be a painting which I'm doing for a show, an exhibition, which I plan second time to do in Northern America. So fingers crossed. But the way things are looking I can't see it happening before 2024. So I'm just the beginnings of these shapes going in. Like they're letting the brush dance around. It's not until we go slightly darker than this that we're really going to feel this area. Now, I want to build a little bit of dark and green into that in a second. I'm going to move to a different brush. Again, one brush per colour. This 
particular case. So we're now going to go into green number three on palette paint by numbers. So let's see what the screen looks like first. Yep, okay, so it's just a tad darker than the other, which is just what we want. Reinforcing that a little bit. And let's just dance around this area tight. Very, very small shapes down here. Joining that up. Kind of would like to see that a little bit lighter on the top so I'm going into green number one and I'm just going to apply a bit of this here and there and possibly even just breaking that into another string over here so making it even lighter than it is Deliberate mistake going too high with that one. Don't ever do as I do. I hear what I say. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. I'm going to use this brush, I think, just to tickle in some of these light areas I want to put in. Right, let's complicate that a little bit more. Coming back into the darker green. Take that in here and soften it. Got a line there, which I don't really want. Not there anymore. So well, we spit some of these down. That's that fine. That's the brush which I is the darker one. Good. Nice to know what brushes you've got on your hand. Now you could because this is kind of a misty light, it's not a direct light as such. It's kind of almost like a nondescript cloudy day. So the shadows of these distant trees are going to be um, 
kind of the base area. If it was a sunny day and the sun was over here, then obviously the shadows would be going this way. This is a very um, not a not a misty, sorry, not a not a uh, sunny day. So clouds are getting in the way, and as such, playing a bit of playing around with the shadows. I put a bit of light in here. leave that alone and put continue over onto this one. So let's make sure I don't have the brushes confused. That would be embarrassing. Okay, so we've got light there. Now, I kind of feel there's a tree. Let's just get the place of this. So I've altered the painting to put this path in, which I kind of like, but just needs kind of a standalone tree which is going to mean there's going to be some light that's going to stick out so this is effectively the light part of the tree um, let's move back a bit i can put it in a bit freer not looking for anything other than a kind of happy shape. I'm going to use the medium, the sticky one for this. <laughs> uh, must pay more attention in class. Yes, that's the right brush. Good. When you haven't got a great deal of difference in your brushes. It's easy to get them confused. Right. So that's going to be quite a nice tree because it's kind of going to be right bomb in the main center stage. So I kind of see the bottom of it maybe somewhere around here maybe kind of going up um, this is just going to kind of map out a rough light shape for this question. Yes we do. We need to go out of the picture. This. There's a big tree. Dominant. Basically I'm just blocking in a light area which I can then complicate as we go tree-esque shape okay and move to the next pile down. You can see it's quite subtle, it's very, very little difference. I suppose I could have jumped and made a string, but I didn't. Sorry, never mind. What I mean by this jump a colour and make a string connecting the two separate colours up. So rather than go for three different colours, I go for two, oops, do it that way, go for two colours and then I can make a string be between these two colours to make the third, but I, I didn't, I made three separate dots. 
Well, there's probably a reason, which I'm not too sure why, but we'll, uh, we'll invent a reason for it. Maybe. Right. Good. So I've kind of got a shape going on there. Let's bring that down. I'm going to jump into another colour. And we're going to look for that brush, which I put down. Good. So this is green at number four, which is the strongest of the light greens, you, you could say. Now, So this is a way I would typically speaking put a tree in, go from light into dark or dark into light. Um, don't paint leaves. Gosh, can you imagine that pain that that would be? Painting a tree a leaf at a time. I do know some artists who do that sort of stuff. And uh, I couldn't do it. Ouch, that was the chair I just backed into. Okay, so three brushes in the hand, and we're going to go for a darker brush, a darker green. Um, tempted to actually pull in another brush, I think I will. There we go. Good. It has got a good spare brush handy. Right, so this is going to be green number five. Going to dip. And we can now check this green out. So again, that's good. Not too big of a shift. I want to just focus on putting this tree in, in rough shape. And then I kind of, in my head, I know where it is then. It's bound to change. So I'm not going to be too fussed about this, but I'm just going to put some light and dark shapes in, which tell me where the light is hitting it. shoot across a little bit more light into that. Now the beauty of, um, why do we use a sticky medium? Well, the beauty of it is I can apply paint on top of paint which I've only just applied. And the sticky medium makes it all work. Which is, you might think, oh, that's great, which it is. But don't paint a portrait with it. It's, um, it's great for texture, but it's not good for anything which you don't want a texture on. So um, the sky here, definitely don't ever use a sticky medium for a sky. The effect won't be pretty. But forests. Oh, there's a thought. Perfect. Now, some, this is very much personal choice, I must add. Some artists, I know many, in actual fact, don't use or like using any other mediums other than um, an odorless solvent and linseed oil. 
That's it. And they'll make the combinations of those two with um, you know, a bit of terps or solvent and a bit of linseed oil and a, let's say a 25 to 75 mix or a 50-50 mix depending on the stage of painting. Um, and they're happy with that. It, it works for them. Other um, artists I know use stand oil, which is a boiled linseed oil and turpentine mix for a medium. They wouldn't want to use anything else. And that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. So it's very much personal choice. I enjoy using it for certain genres of painting. Still life, if there's a texture to be had. But if I'm painting glass, not really. No, I wouldn't do that. Okay, so we can see the shape of... Uh, that's just the highlight, lighty bits. Let's put that down and go into some of the dark. So let's take that... I have used that brush. Okay, so I'll just check if I'd used it. I'm going to take those two brushes down. <coughs> Put that one over there. Right, now we're going to go into a darker green. I'm going to just actually put the dark, dark darks in. Let's see how dark this is. Okay, that's reasonably dark. I'm going to go, when you're going from lightest light to darkest dark, it's very easy to destroy the chroma as you merge the two together as, as they touch, put it that way. So we don't want to do that. Putting a few dark areas in where I would perceive this dark to be. It's very dark, gosh. That's fine, I don't mind dark. Can't be too dark though. <laughs> it's just going to come up a notch to the other colour, which is green number six. We've actually got seven greens on here. Yeah, that's a more of a friendly dark, I think. Even this, if I started to go too into these lights, it would give, uh, it would certainly give the um, chroma a knock. Right. So come back to this shortly. I just wanted to put that in so I knew where the tree was and um, I give it a rough shape. I want to come back to that when it's uh, got a bit sticky. I can play with that a little bit. Right, let's just push a bit of that colour in around here. I'm only looking at dark shapes currently. This Oh, I've got a light green on. I want to work that in. Oops. Yep. Now, coming back into that dark. Not 
too much paint, too little kind of thinking of just the right amount. But I want to make it a bit more menacing into that dark zone. Let's just have this is green, not too dark. I'm going to lift that a little bit. Good. Sometimes the hardest part of a painting is just getting it started. When it kind of does stuff. All on its own. Whizzing up a notch. Push some of these. You could call it a mid grain. Oops, I lost the brush. Well recovered. This will look, um, well hopefully anyway, more like a tree after we've uh, put the other bits and pieces in. But for now, all I'm looking for is a light and dark shape. And when you start painting, you look at um, things that you're going to paint and you get all confused because there's too much information coming into your head through your eyes. So after a while you learn to control that and focus just on the light and dark shapes. And when you do that, all of a sudden things become a lot easier and clearer. You don't have to paint the tree, you just got to paint the light and dark shapes. Whatever it is you're painting, simplify it into just that. And the tree See, it already looks more like a tree. Um, I'm going to move this over though, because I don't like it there anymore. I'm going to, to give you an idea as to um, where we could, what we could do with that. I'm going to think for a moment. Let's have a, if we stick a trunk in, for example, just as a guide. Um, let's have a moment. I don't want to go dark brown, it's going to be mossy, and so I'm going to mute it. Let's see what this says. So this is only just a, oh, that's, you know, a good place to stick it, kind of, maybe. So let's just check out where we are with it. It's here, and it's big, and I'm glad you're putting the trunk here where I initially had it. It's got a that's one side, it's going to be around here is the other side, so somewhere between the two. Is going to be the. Um, trunk. Okay, see that ish works. Um, I said I use the word ish because I don't want to be too positive on it really. So let's just make that a bit thicker. And I've got it coming kind of straight down. 
think it might have worked. Um, because this is in the open, one could actually have the beginnings of a shadow going across. But it also tells me where, if I put something like this in, it's going to tell me where um, the bottom of the tree is. Now, I'm undecided, so this isn't a decision, this is a what it'll look like if it's there kind of thing. Let's have a look. Doesn't look too bad. Is that a lot of trunk? So we could come down with fudge. Does that improve? This is a question. I think it does. Um, so let's just take a light brush and pop a bit of light. Something going around there. Yeah. Okay, so that kind of works. And I'm going to strengthen one side. Um, trees are many different things. They're not just green and they're not just brown. These are in shadow. So let's put a shadow in. I'll just make it a brown-esque. I don't know about that. I think I'd rather see it as a green-esque, but something much darker than that. So I'm going to add some black to this. This is not going to be the finished um, item tree thing, but it's going to help me decide on what is. And I'm just going to stick a bit of white something, same brush because I'm lazy, but let's just pop that in. Okay. It's very rough. Don't need it to be any more than that for the time being. Yeah, I can see it kind of, I, I like that. Um, I'm looking at the computer screen, which is there. And I can see the whole painting from there. So it's kind of nice. This path runs around this and goes off there. The tree serves a purpose of some sort. And I kind of like what it does. So that's in. I'm going to go a bit of dark around. Maybe. Maybe. Or is that exposed into light? Good question. That's a good question. Got to say, I think I prefer a light. Well, that's good news. I'm glad we've uh, sorted that out. So, the other thing is, what kind of light? Let's just put the light in first to see if we agree or I agree. I'm a Gemini, so there's two of me inside. You veered off track a little bit, which I'm sorry for, but it kind of it's this is what painting's about sometimes. It's okay. Well I'm gonna for the time being keep it ish light. Now you notice I'm not too bothered about a colour. I'm actually more concerned with value at this stage for that tree. The colour's kind of almost irrelevant at this stage. I've just stuck it in. Um, it's more like the value. 
value, tonal value. So um, because that's the thing which creates everything. Tonal value is good. Paintings, good. Yeah, it's much stronger um, for the light back end. We can make it go darker as it goes further back. Um, what does that look like? Dark tone, we can change it, we can do all sorts of things to it. But I think the light as it comes forward. Yeah, okay, jolly good. Right, carry on. So now we get back into what we were doing. Um, so this is light. Let's get the brain working again. This is that colour, and that is that colour. Joy, great. So we are there. Let's pop this in. So I think it needs to go a lot darker. A little bit. Right. Bit of the tree sap goes in. Let's just have a quick look at time. It's good. So we've got an hour to go. Let's just see if that's just made out a little bit darker around that area. I think that works. I can always make it go even darker still when I get this in. So what I do now is just to wiggle that little point of a little bird and so we can start cutting in. I would say and it's slightly darker. So this has got like a tree sap sticky medium on it. means unlike an oil which would just slip around the place it's biting into the new colour and dripping it probably for my for forest I'd say the Venetian turpentine or the PM5 from my carding are definitely my favoured mediums for working into a forest at least. I think also the still life if it's something like a I don't know mushroom or something. the shape of this tree in the foreground we can we can work on. I don't want to go too um too detailed on it. It's gonna be I think a bit cut up and loose anyway. Well I think I still want to get the basic um shape in. And then I can start breaking that and putting into more complicated shapes. All right, let's go underneath. Oh, 
got one brush for both darks here because they're quite near to each other and uh, I've also run out of brushes so it's the other good reason. Right. So now I'm really back into chasing light and dark. Um, kind of mindful actually that that needs to come up. And I do have a photograph which I'm roughly, very loosely basing this painting on, um, which I took in Yorkshire many years ago. And um, one thing I don't want it to do, I don't want it to look like the uh, photograph. It's actually on the screen at the bottom of the palette. Give you an idea. That's how loose we're doing it. I mean, I've already put a path in and a tree which isn't there, so it's kind of very loose. But it's, I prefer, I like this. It's kind of, you don't have to go every single perfect nook and cranny into a painting. You can take something and move trees around, move buildings around, move, put a path in which isn't there. If the stream isn't going in the right direction, we'll change it to a different direction. You know, it's your painting. You don't have to uh, make it look exactly as it is in the photograph. It's a thing called a artistic license. You can use one of those. So chasing the light and darks means I can now put a shape in like I did just then of a tree. Could have been a tree, could have been a bush. I really don't know what it is. Um, I don't even think it's in the photograph, but it's in the painting now. And I think it looks okay. which I really like about painting. Can't do this with a photograph, camera. I suppose someone's going to say, oh yes you can, but oh no. I'm not in the uh, going to market to change someone's mind, but I kind of just feel when you have a paintbrush in your hand and you've got a, something in your head or your heart, and you can stick it on a canvas. That's fun. And I spent nine years in photography as I left school, so I kind of had a foot in, I had a foot in both camps really. Now, here, all right, but here, not so. We need to be really mindful of keeping the chroma disappearing and the contrast disappearing as it goes down. Um, also throwing myself, I feel like I'm knitting so many brushes in my hand. But I'm very mindful of um, not going dead boring and flat and stuff. I need to keep this. Yeah, I like that. A lot of people think forests are really difficult. Trust me, it's all in it's all in your head. It's it's okay. So it's how you tackle it. And for years, I mean, I found you know we want to burn a forest. It's impossible. I mean, I've got a small enough brush. It's millions of leaves and pebbles and bugs and all sorts of things. But once you are shown how. You think, well, that's easy. And it is. It's like everything. It's till you shine out to drive a car, it's impossible. Yeah. That's it's beginning to you can feel it's beginning to get into 
Well, I, I think it can anyway. Let's, let's, let's develop. This area is not developed, so let's get into this now. I've got a color here, which again, I just want to put in, it's like chasing the shadows. So, oh, that's my phone. Right, chasing the shadows. And I'm putting shadows in where I feel they should go at this stage. I've also got a little bit of reference, but trust me, it doesn't look anything like <laughs> this. So it's not much help. A little. Kind of feel this is all right, but we need to go darker soon, so let me just put the last few bits of that in. Let the brush just dance over. I don't know what that is, but that's going to be off. I'm going to just put that brush down, because I want to go darker into the next colour. I think it's this one. I'm trying to get as far away as the as I can from the um, canvas, so I can see the whole painting rather than a sliver or a small section, I should say. Let the brush dance. I'm mindful of, I don't want to go too high a chroma at this kind of distance. Don't want to regret putting a colour in. I think we're safe just with that. Let's do some more. Yeah. I think when you relax into something, and bearing in mind, obviously, doing a live stream isn't what I would recommend if you wanted to relax. But when you relax into your painting and you kind of shift to a more it's a better place. You, you shift to a place where you're not worried about anything and you just kind of connect with your painting. It's, it's really, I suppose musicians would feel something similar when they're playing a piece of music. They feel the emotion behind the tune they're playing and, and that's, that's what I love about painting, especially forests and seascapes. I don't get the same kind of passion about a carrot, but a forest or a seascape, yeah. I really kind of an emotional connection that I have with this kind of painting. And I'm very mindful of um, something I said when I first started this, and there was a try not to make it go too green. I wanted to put a lot of oranges in, and it's sure enough, I think it's gone kind of green. But there is orange in it somewhere. So I felt that the other day. I thought, I'm making it green. But these would be green, and the sky is kind of orange esque, so it's few green bits in the middle, I'm sure I'll be okay. Right. Let's 
go into more now, bringing it down. So here we will, we're going to have more of the green coming in. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to relax into this and kind of connect with the, the painting is pretty much what I was trying to say a moment ago. And uh, keep focus on technique and shape and values because those three things are going to make a big difference to whatever painting you paint. And all of this I can further develop as well, so bring it a bit more alive now. It's going to go to a light green again just in here. I want to put a light shape in. Can I see it? It's about here. I want to go lighter than that, in actual fact. Yeah, I think, do we need to go lighter still? Let's have a quick moment. I am going to put that very light green. I'm going to go a little bit of the uh, Venetian taps. Notice how clean the Venetian taps is. There is zero deposit of paint in there. Whoops, wrong, wrong colour. And the reason that is I don't dip is a brush in and wiggle it. I just dip it in and withdraw it. Venetian Terps goes on the brush, no pigment goes in the Venetian Terps. Okay, so this is another tree. Near, near ground. Highlight section of it. And I can, because I've got quite a bit of Venetian Terps on the mix, it's going to go sticky. And I can start adding the dark area onto that fairly swiftly. So let's bring this down again. Okay, I'm going to bring another tree in here. Separate to that one. A bit more Venetian taps. And put that in. I kind of like that shape as well, that's nice. So putting a bit of light in here and there. So you can see where we're going with that. That works. If it works, it works. Now Yeah, that was good. That was a good place to stick something. Right, so that's a light brush. Let's put it down so I don't want to fall in the hand. Going to this green, and it's, you know, this Venetian Terps is really, it's almost, I won't say it's dry, but it's really sticky. It's like honey on your fingers. One way of describing it. breaking this light shape up a little bit. The word I would use would be complicate. I'm not putting detail in, I'm just 
complicating a shape into smaller shapes. And it works. If I was putting detail in, then I'd be painting a leaf at a time. I'd also be, well, not in a good place, put it that way. Can you imagine painting a tree with a leaf at a time? Don't do that. into that in a second. Now let's look at getting one of these brushes is dirty. What's that one? Again, a bit of the Venetian Turks. Difficult to recommend as to how much Venetian Turks or medium to put in with pigment. It's just dip your brush in and probably enough. Um, too much, it's going to run all over the place and you, again, like all mediums, it's not going to be that pretty. Right. Now, just you see what I'm doing, I'm just kind of wiggling the brush around, it's letting it dance around the place, cutting into that shape. And complicating it. Once I've done that, and then get carried away, I will maybe go slightly darker or we'll start wrapping it round into the this side. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now, so we've got this edge. Well, look, we've got light paint and it's wet. So, all you need to do is just get a bit of this and stick it over there and wiggle it around a place. And so, you know, you are. It looks like Christmas. Don't blend it into oblivion. You don't want to do that. You want to keep the shapes. That's it. Can you see we've got like what, one, two, three in a line? How do we do it? Better. And I'm going to go slightly darker. Not too much paint. I just want to bring out the light colour of the this tree. And the easiest way of doing that is to force the dark colour of the space around it. There's two trees there I've gone into. And then just complicate that into the other colour to the right. There you go. You get the kind of you know, shapes of those trees as they go back. I don't want to go too dark. I'm pretty sure I've got a dark brush on here, but maybe it's just enough to make a difference. I wave all that in. You can see another one. If you feel this looks easy, uh, it is, but you only, we only complicate things by saying, oh, at least we don't help by saying things like, oh, that's hard. 
We just made it hard, much harder than it was a minute ago when I said it was easy. Makes sense. Um, what you think, what you tell yourself, have, can have, can has, can have. <laughs> oh dear. Um, a very big impact on the, what you feel you can do. It's really fear. I couldn't operate if I had fear when I'm painting because can you imagine this? Nah, I'd be a shivering wreck on the floor if I had fear inside me when I was painting, especially if I'm streaming. The sort of thing you want to do behind closed doors with the internet off. But Fear. You can control it if you feel it and know what it is. And take a breath, breathe it out. It's just a waste of space. It serves zero purpose in life. Doesn't matter if you're learning to swim, jumping out of aeroplanes with a parachute on, hopefully. Um, Fear just gets in the way. And it's not just those big things. It's sometimes it's just getting up in the morning and going out and facing the world. Another feeling I feel with regards to painting, it does something for that inner confidence. I don't know quite how many juniors I've taught how to paint. It must be literally hundreds and hundreds over the many years I've been teaching. And um, normally it takes a, a few months, but the change, when a young child can sort of actually paint something which they feel pleased or really happy about because they've learned the technique which unlocks that knowledge and, and that ability. It doesn't just impact on their art, it impacts on their maths, their English, their physics, their, the way they interact with others because they feel confident they can do something well. So this painting or painting in general, um, I, I just I will never ever stop painting. Just brings back such a lot of pleasure. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, good evening to you too. Um, right, it's moving on down here. So the further we go away, the less colour, the less chroma, the less contrast, the less of everything, less detail, less... Just about anything and everything you can think of, it's less as you go into the distant. You can really see how that's beginning to develop up. This tree, don't worry about it, it's, it doesn't look like a tree just for the minute. Look, 20 minutes to make it into a tree, it's not going to happen, but these shapes will complicate, make smaller, um, and it will be the tree, or part, or look like a tree, hopefully, um, by the time we've done all that. Let's just move on. I want to develop this a little bit more, so <clears throat> you've got this light shape, just needs to do something um, as it comes in. So let's just have a think. For those of you who are um, watching or looking at this video and going, well, 
Oh, I you know, like to paint. Start small. Start with a canvas, I don't know, five by seven inches wide or something like that. And don't do one painting, do four. And do four paintings of the same thing. So that way you're giving it a go. Doesn't work, no worries. You know, do it again. Learn from your errors. We never learn a thing from doing anything right. So just have a go. And if you're doing four paintings, by the time you get to the third one, it's probably going to be a little bit better than the first. And also you don't have that fear of, oh, I'm going to mess it up. Who cares? You've got another three on the go. Don't mean for this to sound in any way arrogant. It's not meant to be. But um, I know this can't be messed up. Because whatever I do to it, if I do something wrong, it's all correctable. It's never going to bite me. Um, I, I can work on this and make it what I want it to be. So... You know, there's no fear of painting. It's our ego. We want to be, uh, we want to look good, we want to feel good. It's, it's all that ego stuff. And take the ego out of painting and what have you got? Freedom. Freedom to mess it up. With no fear. I think every successful person I've ever met has messed everything up 20,000 times before he's happy with something he's done, or her, they have done, I should say, sorry. And don't think there's just one way of doing something. We have four tutors in our school. Each tutor does things differently. All work. You find your path, you find your where you are happy to work, and that's that's it. It's, you find your, your way. So there's not one way of doing anything. I want to really define this shape of a tree, but I'm, it's, I'm not going to be able to do it in 15, 20 minutes. So that's going to be something which we'll, I'll work on during the week. Hopefully this week coming, I'll have a more of a successful week. I've now got two, two or three days which I'm working in the garden. <laughs> it's getting there. We're uh, planting trees and all sorts of things. Hey. <laughs> And uh, it's looking nice. Now, yeah, I want to really get some definition into this. And what I'm going to do it is the dark and light and higher contrast. So let's look at this darker colour. I'm going to put a little bit of Venetian terps in. Um, now, let's have a quick thing. I'm going to go here because this will have very little light in actual fact I could go and add black to that oh black did I say black let's set it again so lots of artists use black I use black it's okay it's very dark don't put it anywhere that it's light okay here we go but I don't use black on its own. I use it like white to mix up with other colours. But Rembrandt, Caravaggio, I will use black. Yeah, it's good enough for 
Rembrandt, I think it's okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say no, don't use it. Will Turner, he has many things in his oil paintings, sorry, his oil paintings and his, his watercolors. I meant to say his watercolors, but then of course he has a lot of oils as well. So, he actually did over a thousand oil paintings and over a thousand watercolors in his day. That's a lot. I can see I'm just letting the brush dance now, so I'm going to try and get some definition into where this tree is. <sighs> this will um, take some work. This tree is going to be a feature, so I'll uh, record it, um, but I don't think I'll probably going to take longer to do that than it would a stream, so I'll record it and it will become um, one of them the YouTube vids. Sections of this painting I think will also find themselves into the online school videos. Because even when I'm not streaming and I'm painting this, I record. Yeah, that's beginning to see how that, that dark has beginning to define that tree, so which is it's really kind of nice. Okay. And this dark is the dark shadow of the deep, deep forest that we can see just there. So it all begins to make sense now. Well, it will do. More and more. Because although I'm not going to put detail in any of this, detail, I said that D word, gosh. So I'm not going to put any detail, I said it again, into this area. I'm going to put it detail into around here, and as I come forward more, and here it'll be, I don't know, I just want to maybe some of the major bits and pieces really have it pen sharp because I want it to lead into this. We'll see. It's a journey. I might change my mind. So as I go up, I don't want to go too dark. Just enough to. I'm using still a brick brush. I'm using a number four from Rosemary Co. A filbert, ivory filbert. Um, extra long. Uh, is it they're just so long? Yeah. So. Can't write extra long or a long. Writing's a bit faded on the side. Some of my brushes from Rosemary and Co. I've had for like 10 years and they're still in prime condition. There is a link, in actual fact, to Rosemary and Co. brushes on the um, description of the video. Um, so if you go into the uh, just underneath the video you'll see a description or an expanded area you can uh, get some of the links to what we use and descriptions of brushes and colours and all sorts. There's a lot of information behind each of these uh, videos which we do. Now that's probably too dark, so I don't want to go too dark, I want to go dark but not too dark, so let's put a little bit of colour back into it. Uh, 
Okay, so let's move in to work on this area a bit more around here. Um, notice I've I've not used a soft brush. <coughs> oh, sorry, slurp of tea. Hope I haven't deafened anybody then. Orange Elon. Very good. Right. Just taking some of the hairy edges off. <coughs> I see a little bit. I mean, all this is going to get really uh, worked on, so I'm not really too fast. It's not going to look like a tree just yet. Tree-esque is all I could hope for. The technique which I use to paint with is very simple. It has to be, else I wouldn't be able to do it, by the way. And that is, focus on light and dark shapes. doesn't matter for anything else. Put those light and dark shapes in. Try and get the colour as near as you can, or want. don't have to be exact colour. But the values need to be true for it to look correct. And um, once you get those light and dark shapes in, then you can complicate them. You can break them down into smaller shapes. And then smaller again and smaller again. Until you've got a detailed painting. Um, and that might sound very simplistic but uh, it's true that's that's it that's what that's what I do and it works that's why I do it so that'll look like a tree eventually till now let's just wick into this so I want to cut into that area bit darker so I'm going to put the dark, dark brush down. It's going to be this one or this one. Might have used the wrong brush, but never mind. Um, so this is the shadow going in of a tree behind the tree. And that shadow makes the tree, the highlight of the tree, stand out. Slightly different colour. might complicate these a little bit more, but I don't really think I'm going to complicate them much more than they already are, because it works. And if it works, it isn't broken, as they say, so it's all good. So let's have a little bit of green onto this, I think. Might need to go slightly lighter. Hope I'm not obscuring too much on my shoulder. I've got the painting at an angle so that the camera comes in from the side solely for that reason, so that um, I don't obscure with my shoulder the painting. Right. Yeah, so if I get that dark brush again onto that. Too light. 
Music is done with it. So sh the shapes we're getting in, and it's all a little bit sticky, which is nice. This sort of work anyway. You see now I can put some smaller shapes in. Not detail, just smaller shapes. And that brings this a little bit more alive. Bit of a highlight here and there. There's three bushes there. Where there weren't before. Oops, wrong brush. Alright, so what I'm going to be doing tomorrow is spending some time just working this, complication it out a bit more. Um, even with the Venetian tabs, it should still be uh, workable. <clears throat> I need to make this a bit more staged, if that's the right word. There's not enough going between here and there, so but I don't want to go um, too silly on it. Let's just try put some of the bits in here and show you what I mean. Because it's wet, it's easy to um, soften if I need to or remove and all sorts of it's, it's just just that bit just complicated that little tiny section of it. Really cool. Now, don't do the same brush stroke. Gosh, it looked like it's raining at best. Little kisses, like you're signing a card and you're going, you know, kiss, kiss on it, cross. Um, but change the act, change the angle of the brush constantly, and it complicates easily. So this uh, might take a few weeks but I will be doing a series of uh, shorts, um, 10 minute videos, breaking this down so that you see more action over a 10, maybe a 20 minute video and certainly um, it'll be broken into a tutorial but in set stages with commentary, I'm working on the techniques currently to do that. A lot of exciting stuff, um, but it takes time to figure out how to do it sometimes. We've got things to, to do and plan and it's, it's really, I'm loving this really, because putting these, making these videos, it's just a real pleasure to do and but there's new skills involved which I've never done before um, cutting a video making myself sound interesting is a particularly big challenge um, not one I've confidently got worked out yet gosh I feel like I'm fishing for a compliment I wasn't really <laughs> okay Now, this is the third layer, like I said. The beauty of doing three or four or five layers is if you miss a bit, it's not a disaster. I like it's white canvas. There's a big plane going over. Yeah, the mic's picking it up. Yeah, so we're beginning to work that. 
Let's have a quick look at the time. It's seven o'clock just gone. Um, I think... I think that's that's pretty cool. So what I'll try to do and have finished before the next string is I'll have all of that done. I might actually, I think next stream take a next week take a break from doing this and show you on a smaller canvas how you can paint something like this with bizarre colours and it still works. I think that'll be a bit of fun. It's nice to have a, a week off. A week off? A, you know, a stream off, shall we say, from the serious stuff. And we'll do some light-hearted stuff. So I think next weekend, next weekend, next Tuesday, get it right, um, we'll, we'll do something a bit different. And I'll carry on working on this in the background. And so we'll have a play. We'll have a play next Tuesday. We'll do something in wild and wild colours, OK? And uh, fingers crossed, I hope it'll work. I hope you've enjoyed this evening. Please have a super week. And I shall look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. And please, if you haven't already, already done so, if you could um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, it's totally free. And uh, like the videos if you if you like them, or comment on them, it'd be even better still as we really do take heed of everything you say and, and uh, we, we will react to that in future videos. So all the best to all of you and uh, shall look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at five o'clock.